But you know, this is the first time I'm going to a place and then I carry oil from the house. And the Lord directs me to go and put the oil on somebody's head. Normally, I'll go to the church and I'll take the oil from there. But this one, right from Ghana, I told them, put some oil in my bag. I, I don't travel with anointing oil. But for the first time, I said, put the oil in a bag for me. And they put these oils in my suitcase. Then I got up this morning and the Lord said, take it. You will put this oil on Pastor David and his wife. So, I brought the oil. And it's so small because it means it's not oil for a community. Eh? It's oil for a personality. Not a community. A man and his wife. Today I'm preaching a message. We can drop the organ, then you follow me with time. I'm preaching a message, and it is called the oil for replacement. Everybody say oil for replacement. I have a secret for you. And the secret is that somebody somewhere has disappointed God. Somebody somewhere has failed God. Or someone somewhere is tired. And God wants to replace them. So God wants to put oil on you to replace somebody. That's the secret. Elijah the prophet. And Elijah means Jehovah is my God. But this Elijah got to a time when he was tired, discouraged, frustrated, running away from God. He got to Horeb. And God told him, he said, in 1 Kings 19, verse 15 and 16, he said, go on your way to the wilderness. Go back on your way to the wilderness. And when you go on your way to the wilderness of Damascus, when you come, anoint Hazel to be king over Syria. Anoint Hazel to be king over Syria. But this Hazel's anointing is hazy. Hazel's anointing is hazy. And say, anointing, Papa. And that is because Elijah did not anoint Hazel. Now we don't know what happened. Maybe he went and anointed him and it's not recorded. Or maybe yeah, we, we don't know. But what happened was that something happened through Elisha's ministry. Elisha was the one who encountered Hazel. And that is because Benadad, the king of Syria, was sick. Maya Koshe Abazia. And what is anytime you are sick, you have to be very careful. Because today I'm going to teach you some mysteries, but I can't do it in one hour or one and a half. You need one month to go through this school on the journey of the anointing. Anytime you are sick, you must be very careful. Anytime you are frustrated, you must be very careful. Because your mantle, your anointing, can easily be given to another person. The anointing is something that likes moving about. It is like a, a, a bird sitting on a tree. And when you approach it and you make noise, it will fly from one branch to another, sometimes from one tree to another, sometimes from one country to another. 
That's the way the anointed is. And that is the way the blessing also is. And that is the way the curse is. So the Bible said the curse, like a swallow by flying, the curse causeless shall not come to pass. That means also that the curse can move. And it's the same way a blessing too can move from one person to another, jump from one person and sit on another person. There's no anointing in this world which is permanent, which sits on you in such a way that no matter how you misbehave, God will not shift it. So the Bible said, upon whom you see the spirit descending and remaining. The same is the Messiah. It means the spirit descends on some people, but it doesn't remain. Okay, let's continue. So here's your... King Bernadad is sick. And he took some presents and gave them to one of his servants called Hazel. And he said, go to my father, Elisha, and ask him, shall I recover from this sickness? Oh, people, it's not everybody you tell you are sick. They want to kill you already. Go and ask my father, shall I recover? This is the king of Syria, but he calls Elisha the prophet, his father. And it came to him, he said, he brought him presents. He said, hey, you know, I, I'm bringing you a present. Yesterday something happened. I finished a meeting and I was taking pictures with people. I finished a meeting, I was very tired. I sat on the chair, I said, I want to take a picture with everybody. So I took a picture with anybody who wanted to take pictures with me. Maybe there were about 100 people or over 70 or 80. Then only one out of the whole lot. No, there were two. Two, not one. One person came to me and said, I'm happy to see you, sir. Then he blessed me. Then another lady, and that is the one. As for this other one who said, I'm happy to see you, sir, and bless me. He has done it before. So he, even with that picture, he would have blessed me. But there was one lady. I don't know whether it was 20 pounds. I think it's about 20, 20 pounds. Said, I cannot take a picture with you for free. I'm sewing into your life, daddy, and give me the 20 pounds. 20 pounds is not big money. But of all the people who took the picture with me, one had common sense. <laughs> I'm not saying the rest didn't have common sense. They were too spiritual to have common sense. And I didn't take a picture because of that. But that woman's gesture exposed the rest. Am I teaching? So he said, I'm sick. Go to the man of God with presence. And we are not told that Elisha rejected the presence like the way he rejected Naaman's presence. Naaman went to a man of God to be healed. Ben Haddad sent a message to his father. It's a different thing. One was going to a healer. The other one was going to a father. It's a different thing. We have a long journey today. I know the people who were with me at Trinity Baptist Church, when I preach oil for replacement or replacement by oil, they say, oh, we've heard it before. You haven't heard anything. <laughs> I don't preach the same thing. I don't preach the same thing, the same topic twice. I think my bones are. <laughs> <laughs> shall I recover? And the man of God said, go and tell him he shall recover, but he will die. How can you recover and die? Go and say to him, Thou mayest certainly recover. How be it? The Lord showed me that he shall surely die. And when he went, the man of God, they, he told the man, they, 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 they said you will re recover. But then he did something. The king was resting, Bernard, and Hazel took a wet towel or wet cloth. 
when them pressed him and suffocated him, assassinated him, and ascended the throne. That is the way Hazel took over the kingship. So why did God say go and anoint Hazel? Is that an anointing? To take blanket and kill somebody? And so on and so forth. Now, it simply means that through your ministry, your prophetic declarations and everything, and the anointing of God on your head, you will anoint a certain man called Elijah, and the Eli Elijah, and the Elijah to go and speak a word, and that, that word he will speak will make Hazel a king. Then he said, oh, no, on your way to, I want you to anoint Jehu to be the king of Israel after Joram. Anoint Jehu to be king. That means Jehu too has to take somebody's place. And then you yourself, because of your level of discouragement, anoint Elisha to take your place. Because you see, your name Elijah means Jehovah is God. But you don't believe in the God of salvation. So you don't believe that God can save the people of Israel. And you said they are all backslidden and you are the only one left. And because your name is Elijah and you believe God is God, but you don't believe that God can save. Anoint Elisha and Elisha means the God of my salvation. Anoint somebody who believes God can save to take your position. And the Bible said that. Now look at the place where he said an anointing. You see, I like reading the Bible in depth. He said, anoint Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abel Mehola, to be a prophet in your room. Elisha means God is my salvation. Shaphat means to judge. Shaphat. It means judge, sentence, vindicate, or punish. So, anoint Elisha, the son of Shaphat, to bring judgment sentence on Jezebel who has persecuted you and brought you into the state in which you are. So anoint him to take your place. And this man, he comes from Abel, Mehol, Abel Mehola. And Abel means to come out of. Mehola means the stream of dancing. You are so depressed, you must anoint somebody who is coming out of the stream of singing and dancing to take place, to take your place. You know what, people? There are many men of God, women of God, and big people who are running away from Jezebel. And today, God is going to put oil on you because your name is Elisha. And number two, you are the son of Shaphat. That means that God is going to use you to bring judgment on people who have persecuted men of God, persecuted the church, persecuted the things of God, and destroyed the foundations of God's work. And God is going to use you as an Elijah, the son of Shaphat. And you know where you come from? Abel Mehola. You are coming out of the streams of dancing. You are coming out of the streams of praise. You are coming out of the streams of worship. You are coming out of the streams of glorifying God. God has turned your captivity. And there is a song in your mouth. And there is laughter in your mouth. And there is a song by your tongue. You are the people with the shout. You are the people with the praise. You are the people with glorifying God. And you are about to take over. Your name is Elisha. Amen. 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 You are the son of Shaphat from Abel Mehola. That's a death. But 
this Elijah will anoint a certain man called Jehu. And it's the Jehu story I'm interested in. He will anoint a certain man called Jehu. So Jehu is the main thing we are going to talk about. Second Kings chapter 9. In 2 Kings chapter 9, after Elijah had been anointed, Elijah also found the man. And then the Bible said in 2 Kings chapter 9, and I'm reading from the verse number 1. Very interesting scripture. And Elisha the prophet called one of the children of the prophets. We don't know the name of this particular prophet, but, but there are some Bible scholars who believe it was Jonah. Some Bible scholars believe that it was Jonah, the son of Amittai. They believe that was a man. You and I know Jonah. Huh. And Elisha the prophet called one of the children of the prophets and said unto him, get up your loins and take this box of oil in your hand and go to Ramoth Gilead. So that's why I'm, called, I'm, I'm carrying this box of oil and I've come to Ramoth Gilead. So this is Ramoth Gilead. So he said, take this box of oil. So Elijah told the young man, he said, take this box of oil. And apart from the man of God, I will put this oil on him. But I will put other oil on many of you. Amen. And that's because after today, you must go somewhere and take someone's place. Amen. Now, watch this. The people you are going to take their places, some of them are Elijah's. They are tired. They've given up. They are discouraged. God has used them before. But they are tired and they can't go on anymore. And God says they must be replaced. Number two, there may be a Joram somewhere. Joram was the king of Israel, but he went to war with the Syrians and they wounded him. And he ran back to Jezreel to go and recover from his sickness. And Jehu is to go and take over from Joram. There are many wounded men of God, many wounded businessmen, many wounded people in the system, many wounded people in the church. They are sitting in ministries with wounds. They are in the choir with wounds. They are in the ushering department with wounds. Oh, so for them, they are not in church to worship. The church is like a hospital where they are recovering from sickness. God said it is time. Because these wounded people cannot go to war. It is time for a Jehu to be anointed to take their place. I speak upon your life. Makatabasia. And you know this Jehu. The, the other thing is, when he receives that oil on his life, he's going to overthrow Jezebel and kill Jezebel. There are too many witches and wizards in our churches who are pretending to carry an anointing. I see the anointing coming on Jehu. You must go and you must take over. I pray oil is coming upon you today to overthrow principalities and powers and thrones and dominion. Hazel was anointed to take over from Ben-Hadad because Ben-Hadad was a careless man who was not sensitive enough to know who to send and who not to send. There are too many careless people in our world today who carry an anointing. Now, you call Elisha your father, but you are so insensitive. What, what I mean is that you are so senseless. You, you are so undiscerning. That is the right word. You are so undiscerning that the man you are sending, you don't know that man can kill you. You know what? It is not everybody you send to your father. No, 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 no. Your father has some kind of words. Those words can make and unmake. I have had people who have come to me and they say, can you lead me to Archbishop Duncan Williams? I look at them, I say, in my head, no. 
if I introduce you to my father, you may hurt him. Either you will hurt him or you will hurt me. Or you will go and hurt somebody by that introduction. Listen, don't give stupid people exposure. It's not everybody whose hand you hold. Jump, 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 jump. I'm taking it to my father. Mm-hmm. What about if you go and your father is half naked? Mm-hmm. This person now goes out. I saw the man of God, he was half naked. You can handle the nakedness of your father, but a stranger cannot handle it. And besides, your father's hand is so anointed that who he blesses is blessed. So you take Hazel to him. He speaks a prophetic word on Hazel's life. Hazel can easily displace you in the ministry. And that is why sometimes people take careless human beings and they go and introduce to your spiritual father here and there. By the time you realize the person has done Jacob's chas clay with you. Whilst you are in the bush like Esau, looking for something to come and give to your father, Jacob will go to the background, catch something, go and kill. Oh my Yehovah, Kadabahia. I know when, when I said oil for replacement, those who heard me at TVC, they are like, oh, we heard this word before. That's why I said, you haven't heard anything. You haven't heard anything. Uh, so, let's go back to that text. Let's go back to the text. He said, he called one of the prophets, he said, get up your loins. This time, Elisha too is sending, but he's sending a very sensible guy. You see, <laughs> Hazel, Bernard had sent somebody, but Bernard had sent a covetous servant. Elisha is sending somebody, but Elisha is sending a son of the prophet. So he's sending somebody who is his own protege, he had trained and raised, and he knows that this man would not take advantage of him. And he said, take this box of oil in your hand and go to Ramoth Gilead. And when you come there, look out for Jehu. Jehu simply means Jehovah is God. He's God. That's the meaning of the man's name. Jehu. He said, go and look for Jehu. He is God. Go and look for Jehu. Jehu has to take over because in spite of all the atrocities of Jezebel, God is still God. Go and look for Jehu. The son of Jehoshaphat, the son of Nimshi. Go in and make him rise up from among his brethren. Carry him to the inner chamber. Then take the box of oil, pour it on his head, and say, Thus saith the Lord God, I have anointed you to be king of Israel. Then open the door and flee and die. Listen, these verses we are reading. These three verses are loaded with the procedure for applying oil. And you must understand the procedure. There are five different steps in the application of oil. Number one, when you get there, tell Jehu to rise up and stand. Look at it. He said, when you go, take the box of oil. Oh no, you, you, have, you have gone too far. Verse two. Verse 2. Verse 2. When you come, look out for Jehu and say unto him, rise up from among your brethren. Listen, oil will never come on your head until you rise up above your brethren. 
You must be taller than them for the anointing to come on your head. The oil doesn't come on people who are the same level of everybody. Your, your passion must be above everybody. Your love for God must be above everybody. Your desire for the kingdom of God must be above everybody. Now, what makes you different from other people would determine whether the oil will come upon you or not. Tell him to rise up. Now, you look at the Bible in 1 Samuel chapter 9 and verse 1 and 2. Another man carried an anointing and his name was Saul. And the Bible said concerning Saul, he said, Now, there was a man of Benjamin whose name was Kish, the son of Abiel, the son of Zeror, the son of Bekorath, the son of Aphia, Aphia a Benjamite, a mighty man of power. Verse 2. And he had a son whose name was Saul. A choice young man and a goodly. And there was not among the children of Israel a goodlier person than he. From his shoulders and upward, he was higher than any of the people. Now, I know that this one is talking about height. But I'm talking now about spiritual height. Oil will come on you when you are higher than the rest. He said, when you carry this box of oil, go and tell Jehu, he's the captain of the army, but tell him, rise up. Stand up. You must be different. Listen, your holiness must be higher than theirs. Your prayer level must be higher than theirs. Your commitment must be higher than theirs. In that family, you must be more passionate than everybody. Then the oil can come upon your head. I know people who are sitting and they want oil to come upon their head. They are lying on the ground. They want oil to come upon their head. They are fooling about. They want oil to come upon their head. Fornicating, con committing adultery, drinking alcohol, smoking weed and other things. And they still want oil on their head. It's not possible. Oil will come on your head when you are not like them. You don't talk like them. You don't think like them. You don't act like them. What they eat, you don't eat. What they drink, you don't drink. He said, how shall we order the son? Who is called, who is, who is called Samson? He said, alcohol will not touch his tongue. And the blade or razor will not come upon his head. Because this one is a special child. So number one, the oil for replacement, the qualification, number one is that you must arise. I'm talking about height. What is your height? You must be taller than the rest for the oil to come upon you. And the height I'm talking about is not physical height, spiritual height. Tell somebody sitting by you, how tall are you? I like the way I said, how tall are you? Someone, how tall are you? <laughs> how tall are you? How tall is you or two? <laughs> because in Ghana, if you say tool, they may think you are talking about a tool like cutlass or hammer or... <laughs> how tall are you? I heard that nice one there. They were trying to correct my English. I said, how tall are you? Then they said, how tall are you? <laughs> Somebody say height. Yes. So the Bible said, he went and he told him, rise. And he rose. And then the Bible said, he carried him into an inner chamber. So height, and number two, hiding. Hiding. The anointing belongs to people who know how to hide. The Bible said in Psalm 119 verse 114, he said, you are my hiding place. You are my shield. And I trust and I hope in your word. Hiding. So David, who was an anointed man, went and hid in the caves of Adulam. Yeah. The anointing is for only people who know how to hide. When you come to Bogatanga, oh boy, I can hide proper. From my house to the church. From the church to my house. I don't go anywhere. I don't go anywhere. I don't eat food anywhere. No, no, no. I don't eat. Outside the house, I don't eat. 
And I tell them, when you go somewhere to buy provisions or food, to come and cook in a house, don't tell anybody you are bringing it to the house. I told them, don't go across our road and buy milk or sugar or anything and come and cook anything for me in the house. If you want to die, die alone. <laughs> a man of God, where you buy your food from, people should not know where you buy the food from. And the people who are around you must know how to hide you. Don't surround yourself with me. He's in the room. He's in the living room. And he's in the kitchen. And he's, at the, he's in the gym. Those are fools. And a man of God, if you surround yourself with fools, you will die early. My father is traveling tomorrow. And you know, the man of God is traveling tomorrow. The man of God is traveling tomorrow. And we really, have I sent you? His flight number is flight number so and so. His car number is Buru. Like a Buru ani ne ke kwashiani. You understand what? You are around the man of God. You don't have common sense. That these kind of people we hide them. So he he took the oil. The man rose up and he carried him into a room. Some of you are not carrying your man of God into a room. You are carrying him into open space for gossip, for, 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 for exposing him to danger. May the Lord give you the capacity to hide the man of God. The Bible said by faith. The Bible said by faith. Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months by his father and mother. Why? They saw that he was a proper child. Every precious thing you know you have, you hide it. You put your money in a safe. You put gold in a safe. But look at the way we expose our men of God. And there are times they'll come to you and tell you, so and so want to see you. And you say, no, I won't see the person. And they get offended. They get offended. What kind of man is this? We want people to see you say you won't see them. And then no in our person who you see nipa person who will see them. No, but it's not all the time. They must see somebody. Yes. You are teaching. And then you know, sometimes they expose you when your emotions are not good. Yeah. And then you react to something negative. Then you become a source of gossip. But I told you I don't want to see anybody because my mood is not right. Am I talking to a certain secretary here? Am I talking to a certain administrator here? Am I talking to a certain child here? Am I talking to a certain wife here? Am I talking to a certain husband see over here? You must know how to take a candidate of the anointing and carry him into a room and lock him up. Sometimes when I close service, I have to call the people who are keeping our office and I say, now I'm tired. I can't see anybody else. Oh, daddy, one more person. Daddy, one more person. You know what Samson did? Strengthen me this once. And he died. One more time can kill you. A stroke, a stroke of paralysis happens after just one more attempt. A flash. Maybe if you didn't give the person that little other stress, you might have saved the life of the person. But that little other stress you put on him, tipped it over. I'm not teaching anything. I teach it. So, height. Hiding. And horns. Horns. So he said, carry him into an inner chamber. Do you know how to carry a man of God or a woman of God into an inner chamber? Inner chamber. Carry them into an inner chamber. Inner chamber. All the dangerous, dangerous things, men of God, you hear about them. It's somebody from their close circles. Who went and talked about it? Oh, you know, my daddy doesn't drink. 
sachet water. He drinks only bottled water. And this testimony you are giving, Bulu, Bulu, has he sent you to tell anybody the kind of water he drinks? Am I teaching? <laughs> you know, because I'm an oil engineer, any scripture there's oil in or anointing, I'll find it. I'll find it. I'll find it. Why are you? I didn't hear you. Unim why are you? Why are you? Why are you? So he carried him into the inner chamber. And he took the box of oil and poured it on his head. I said, Lord, what is the head? He said, the horn. So the height, hiding, horn. You put oil on the head because the head carry the horns. And the horns represent the strength of the person. So the purpose of the anointing is to put strength in the head. Mental strength, emotional strength, spiritual strength. But my horn Shall thou exalt like the horn of the unicorn? I shall be anointed with fresh oil. My eyes shall see my desire on the wicked, and my ears shall hear my desire on the wicked that rise up against me. So put the oil on the head. Because the head carry the horns. I pray today. May God put oil on your head. Yeah. And may your head generate horns. Yeah. And may these horns make you overcome the wicked. Yeah. And the destroyer. Yeah. Somebody shout like thunder. And praise yeah. the name of God. Yeah. Now the oil on his head and say thus saith the Lord have I not anointed you king of Israel now say that is hearing whenever you are pouring the oil you must say something the person will hear so I'm talking about hearing because you know what he said say to him have I not anointed you to be king over Israel? Because this man has been subservient as a captain of the army for, for so many years that if you put oil on his head, he will still not understand what is going on. You must say something. Hearing. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. And here is God having a conversation with Jeremiah. Jeremiah 1, the verse number 6. And God is talking to Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I'm a child. I'm a child. And I, I cannot speak. I'm a child. I can't speak. Verse 7. And God said, say not. Say not that I'm a child. For thou shalt go to all that I sent you to. And whatsoever I command you, you will speak. So, when you, are put, when you carry the oil for replacement, number one, height. The candidate must stand up. He must be taller than everybody. Faithfulness is taller than everybody. Prayer-wise is taller than everybody. Word-wise is taller than everybody. Then the oil can come upon your head. So the height. Number two, Hiding. Number three is what? Horns. Number four is what? Number five. Hist. 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 Man of God, one of the things that has worked for me in the anointing I carry is hist. I don't waste time. I'm not a hesitant personality. No, 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 no. I don't take a long time to make up my mind. In the middle of your sentence, I know what to say and what to do. No hesitation. So he told him, when you finish pouring the oil on him, open the door. Flee. Enter 
hurry not. I command the door to open. And when the door is open, run through the door. And don't parry. So after today, I declare that the door is open. And after the door being open, you must watch this. Flee the fornication. Flee the poverty. Flee the confusion. Flee the depression. Flee. Because there is danger and you must flee. Run. Because if you don't run, Jehu will ask you more questions. How am I going to be a king? Because you know, there's nobody there to kill him because he's not in Jezebel's territory. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Why is he fleeing? You have anointed somebody, you are saying he's going to be a king. Good news. Why is he fleeing? Flee before they reward you. Flee before they give you a love offering. Flee before they give you food. Don't eat bread in Bethel. You know what? Don't go there and let them bribe you. Free, flee before somebody gives you a bribe. Flee before they start telling you you are a very great prophet. And before long, you think you are bigger than the Elijah who sent you. Flee before they start giving you flattering titles and start calling you veteran prophet. This is the real prophet of God. Flee. Don't let them think you are a great prophet on your own. Let them know. Let them know you have been sent. If you stay there long, they may think you are a master prophet. Flee. Run. Before these people give you the reward, which, which Gehazi went and took later. Flee. Sometimes, the people you run away from are people who are likely to think, make you think you are greater than your master. Ah. Yeah. No, do you know if the man didn't run? And Jehu became a prophet. Do you, Jehu became a king. Do you know the position they'll give you? The king's prophet. Prophet of the nation or the continent. Before they put on you a title you are not supposed to carry. Flee! Some of you, what you have to flee is a position, is a promotion, is a prosperity. There is something that looks like it's very good, but you have to flee. Run! Run away from titles. Run away from positions. Run away from opportunities. Run away from celebration. Run away from the place where they say, be ye prophecy. He prophecy, ye be ye, be ye. Prophecy Kobabia. This man of God, we've never seen some before. You are the man of God. Let's open a church here right now. And you are the senior prophet and you are the senior pastor. Let's open a church here. Let's break away. You cannot go anymore to Elisha because with this can oh, open the door and flee. Run. Everything must be in haste. Don't waste time. Flee. Flee. No hesitation. When David appeared before Samuel, the Lord said, Arise and anoint him, for this is he. Samuel didn't hesitate again. God sent the man, Ananias. He said, Go. There is somebody called Saul. He's a chosen vessel unto me. Go and anoint him. He hesitated. No haste. No haste. No haste. Many people lack haste. They don't hasten to execute the counsel of God. They don't do it quickly. The Lord said, anoint him. He said, I want to find out. Let me check with people what they have to say about him. The Lord said, haste. Make haste. Make haste. Look at the life of Abraham. When the angels came to him, he said, make haste. Make haste. Make haste. Make haste. So you are making haste. You are running away from something. You are making haste. You are running to your duty post. I pray today. And you are going to take over from Jezebel. Because this Jezebel is a witch. 
idolatry divination and they have destroyed the whole nation. Magadabasia. How long is it going to take you to become the woman of God and the man of God God wants you to be? Today, I was in the bathroom. I told the Lord my age. I told the Lord my age. And I said, Lord, this is my age. Everything left must be fast. You are not saying you want to die. But at my age, you cannot waste time. Anything you do must be done speedily. Speedily. Don't give the anointing to people who are walking. Give it to people who are running. Open the door. Flee. Run. Some of you, sometimes you are a nuisance to a man of God. A man of God who is running and you are walking. And you don't even want them to rebuke you because if they rebuke you, you'll be offended. Huh? You are the secretary to a man of God. It takes you one month to write a letter. You don't want to be sacked. But let me warn some of you who are under the sound of my voice. Just like God is going to anoint you to take somebody's position, you must also be warned that by now, the position you are in, God is preparing somebody to come and take over. Oh, and they disappointed me. And I worked with them all these years. They disappointed me. And I'm around them. And I've been faithful. You have not been faithful. You have not been faithful. You were not faithful. You were a lingering circumstance. Who just lingered on for long. That is all you were. If others had your opportunity, maybe they would have done better. You know, we've been here for long. What results did you create? So by now, somebody else is being prepared to take your place. Lift up your hands. The Bible said, and his bishopric, let another man take. You want to pray, nobody will take my place. And you want to pray that Father anoint me to take my place. Somebody take these ones back on the pulpit for me. I need the space here to work. Kadabasia. Jadabranos komosia nadabasia. Menosaniatik. Somebody pray. So I have more than a song today. I brought myself from your sacrifice. I have more than a song. Today, I brought myself, I am your worship, I am more than a song, today, I brought myself, I am your sacrifice. I am more than a song today. Today, I brought myself. I am your worship. I am more than a song today. Today, I brought myself. I brought myself. I am your I am your sacrifice. I have more than a song today. I brought myself. I 
Lord my Savior. I am your word. I am your word. Say, receive this living sacrament. Abbasia. So generation after generation keep praising you. Yet no word sounds to us. And I ask the Lord. Then I ask the Lord. What makes it? What makes it to And he said, And he said, Yeah. Then I ask the Lord. Then I ask the Lord. Music a little bit. Dada Bosia. Ayakasi. What name fits you? And he said, Then ask the Lord, What name fits you? Listen to me. Some of the men are tired. Some of the men are unfaithful. Some of the men are wounded. Some of the men don't have what it takes for the next level. But the amazing thing is many of them are tired. A man of God called me and said, Daddy, pray for me. He started crying. He said, I'm tired. Man of God, in Crawford, be a breath. Sometimes I tell my wife in the bedroom, I say, Pearl, what pains me most is younger pastors in our ministry. 
Who cannot appreciate the fact that I've been preaching from 1981? And by now maybe I'm getting tired. They can be so unmerciful on you, you'll be surprised. It's just like when my father was 90, I'm expecting him to run. Instead of they believing God for the oil to come on them. They are concerned if somebody rebuked me. Somebody spoke to me in a way I didn't like. Somebody embarrassed me. It's respect you are looking for. Man of God. God said I should bring this oil. And put it on you. You represent a generation. You represent a generation. I wish I knew all the men who are about 50 years old. You celebrated your 50th recently. I wasn't there. But I was with you in the spirit. I think it was 50. I was with you in the spirit. Because your 50 cannot pass. And I will not notice it. The Lord gave me this oil. told me carry it. From Ghana I carried it. The only time I used one of it was when I put it on my wife to pray for her during her birthday last week. And that one is still there. I didn't take that one to bring to you. I brought three bottles of oil. This is the second. One is still left. I don't know who it is for. But I will know the person before I leave town. Maybe it will be the immigration officer. Make sure why you're a good it is. Or see, when are you coming back? I say so. How many of you love this service? It's an ordination and a commissioning service. You are going out to take somebody's position. Somebody's tired. Somebody's wounded. Huh? Elijah is tired. Joram is wounded. Jezebel is into witchcraft. King Ben-Hadad is stupid, sending wrong people on assignment. Jesus, pour the oil on him. And pour the oil on him. Oh, Jesus. Them, touch them. Touch them with the oil. Touch them with the oil. Touch them with the oil. Let them be flooded with the oil. In the name of Jesus. Touch them with the oil. Touch them with the oil. Flood 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 them with the oil. The oil for replacement. The oil for replacement. They are replacing somebody. They are taking somebody's place. In the name of Jesus. 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 Now. Now watch this. Without replacement, there can be no replenishment. It takes replacement to replenish a place. Even your body cells, some die and the new cells take over. Listen to me. 
Anytime you remain long in a system, in a ministry or in a church, it means it's time for you to be, to, to, to be changed. Only two things can happen. If you stay long in a system, you either change or you'll be changed. And I've seen many people, they stay in a system long, but they don't change. Ah! Jesus touch it. Magadabas. Today, God is raising you up to take over somebody's position. I wish I was dealing with a system. Somebody move this puppet back for me a little. I wish I was in a church of just 50 people. Then I can lay hands on everybody. This congregation is too big. Lift up your hands. Father, thank you, sir. Man of God, touch his life. God, touch his life. Touch the life of this man of God. Use him. Take it again. Just, just take it. Man of God, soak it in. Soak it in. Soak it in. Soak it in. You represent a generation. Soak it in. For Bishop Crappy, take it in. For Pastor Alvin, take it in. For all of them. For, for Dr. Nanjo, take it in. For all that generation, take it in. Magadaba Sualaba Siaraba Magadaba Dagaba Dagaba. Jesus Jesus now watch this watch this how about that anointing for replacement coming on four people in the choir to start with four one two three four take it now bring them to me bring them to me Somebody put oil in a bowl and bring it to my right hand. Put oil in a bowl and bring it to my right hand. I'm left of two of you right there. The Lord said to me there were four. That means the ushers didn't bring two of them. I pray in the name of Jesus. May God Almighty locate you. May God Almighty locate you. There is oil on your head to take over from somebody. Arise and receive the oil. Come on, take it. It's coming right now. It's coming right now. I see like a fire coming upon you. I see like a fire coming upon you. The seal of Jehu. The seal of Jehu. Ah! Receive it. Somebody bring them to me now. Let's come see an America Biakata. Rakapasha. Rakapasha. Rakapa. 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 Sonny Paya Tagabaha. There is one more in the choir. There is one more in the choir. There is one more in the choir. There is one more in the choir is burning in you like a fire is burning in you like a fire the flame of God bring them this way now oh, there is still one there bring me the person quickly hey. Now, receive it now. Double see an avatar. I have one more person there. Bring that to me quickly. Bring me somebody here now. Take a bossy aramatata. Lakata, Totemus. Yagapatoni Kabata. The color of a bush. Yabo Sabaha. Kibusa. 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 Then I ask the Lord. Then I ask the Lord. One day. 
with you and he said yeah oh, when I am alone oh, when I am alone in a ministry spiritual coup d'etat in a town because you are receiving an anointing and you are going to take over you are going to replace somebody oh there is a coup d'etat in a company listen to me you are moving in to take a position you never dreamed about is Jehu. Jehu, you are the captain of the army. But after this oil, you are going to become the next king of Israel. Lift up your hand. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. This oil raises an army of 50 people in the congregation begin to touch them wherever they are elect them for a new place ushers bring me anybody you see under the power the spirit of god is upon them they are taking over come on take it right now ah 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 come on let it go don't hold anything back. Bring them to me. Bring them. Until I count 50 people. Until I lay my hands on 50 people. Until I lay my hands on 50. There are 50 people. 50 people. My hands must touch them. 50 some of you have been waiting for too long now the lord said arise and let the oil come upon you come on pray ah, take it Come on. 
on us as watch you bring them Take it. Now, something is happening. Something is happening. You are taking over from witches and wizards, diviners and enchanters, people that are failing and are wasting God's time. I see the power of God on you. You are standing there. You can sense that something is happening to you. Start coming to me here now. I got a Masia. I see the moon I'm looking at the sun I'm looking at the moon and both of them are shining brighter and brighter and I said Lord what is this I'm seeing the Lord said there are seven people here since the sun and the moon started shining the world has never seen people like them they are seven right here one two three four five six seven let them receive that oil on their head and somebody bring them to me here right now come on pick up the oil 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 from the foundations of the earth you are carrying now bring them to me take it now 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 watch this Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Everybody on this side of the building, lift up your hand. Lift up your hand. Holy Spirit, I pray that you bring me the six people. There were seven. I've laid hands on one of them. There are six of them left. Super intelligence super anointed into positions they've never dreamed they will be Makatabasia. nobody can discriminate against them nobody can stop them five of them are left stand there receive it somebody bring me this young man bring me this young man bring me this young man my hand is pointing it. bring me this young man bring me this young man take it now take it now Makatabasia. receive it Wow. Hold the drums. Oh, take it. Whew. Jesus. Ah. 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 
holy matter receive it somebody a light is coming out of your family a light is coming out of your land a light is coming out of your race receive it in the name of jesus come on take it there is oil on your head ah there's oil come here to me receive it now take it Bring me this lady here. Come here. Receive it now. Wow. Change. Listen. Oh. Listen. The trouble about many people is that they cannot hear. Even if God speaks, they can't hear. <laughs> Even if God speaks, they can't. Ooh. Look at it. That woman at the end there, can you come to me? That woman standing in the white and the grayish or greenish, what word? Come. Ah. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Oh. Hey. So far, that to child. Spirit to spirit. Breathe. Oh, just breathe. Just 
God is on you. Oh Jesus. God is sending people. He said, I anoint you today. Put your two hands on your head. And your two hands on your head is a sign of the anointing. And God is saying, I'm sending you. I'm sending you to take over. Uh, I'm sending you to take over. You are taking over from King Jura. You are taking over from Benadad. You are taking over from Elijah. Something is happening. Oh, take it. Ah, Jesus. Yagadaba Sunni Masia. Receive it. Lift up your hands. Wave them to Jesus. Give him the glory and the honor. Listen to me. Listen. Listen. Elijah knew that he was anointing Elijah to take over from him. He knew it. So from the one Elijah started following him, he knew that this man is going to take over from me. The pathetic thing is Ben Haddad and Jura. All this spiritual arrangement to replace them was taking place and they did not know it. Lady, can you come to me? Because God is preparing you for a certain position. Take it. The 
deception in the body of Christ is that we think the men we are seeing are going to live forever. And that is why so many times they die and go and they have no replacement. Because at the time when people who are following them should be desirous of the anointing, they are rather criticizing them, complaining and finding fault. Gossiping, insulting, talking. These men sometimes can be sick and they are even in a coma and the people are still gossiping. How many anointings are we going to see in our world which went and nobody really took them? I can go from continent to continent. When they leave our world, they are not replaced. Give me the replacement of Kenneth Hagin or Ora Roberts in America. You, no, just name the replacement. No, bring, bring the replacement. Bring me the replacement of Smith, Smith Rugglesworth right here. They live without replacements. Hmm. I call their anointings extinct anointings just like extinct animals uh. is there an anointing you have admired and said lord as for this anointing the day this anointing leaves the earth physically i want to carry the anointing spiritually Always, the camera should be here. Come here, come here. Put your hands on my back. Touch it. Ah, I pray. For any anointing that is on the face of the earth, may God raise people that can follow the anointing and catch the anointing. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Come on, take it. Now, watch this. 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 Look at many of the ministries we have in the world. Drop the organ, let them hear this. Many of the ministries we have in the world. When the leaders and the founders pass on, the people who take over from them look very different from them. If you want, start checking. How many of them look like their fathers when their fathers were alive? One day, a big man of God told me something. He said, Pastor Isud, the way you are, your biological children or spiritual children, I don't think they can take over from you. Maybe one day when you are dead and gone, they may have to take your ministry and change it into another version. 
which they can manage. And do that one because as for what you carry, I don't think your children can handle it. And I said, what about yours? He said, I'm thinking the same. And that's because you know what? These men are like monsters. No, 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 people. They are not boastful. They are not prideful. They are human beings like everybody else. But you know what, people? There is something they understand. There is something they want to be. These are people who are pursuing God, not ministry. But their children are looking for the ministry, but not God. I started a meeting at 10. At my age, I started a meeting at 10. I closed at 4 30 in the afternoon. Thank God it wasn't in a hotel. They would have driven us away. <laughs> Jesus! As for those of you, Somebody go and protect David Andrew's screen for him. Protect the apostle's screen for him. Hurry up. Don't say I didn't warn you. There's a house where they call Kaya Sunkube. That means things have been thrown down. Father, let five of them. Because the Lord told me that these five who are on this platform, who were standing on the platform with him, they have no idea the anointing they've carried. They have no idea. They have no idea. Oh. Take it. Ah. Listen. It's an embarrassment. When fathers are replaced by children who don't resemble them. Elisha took the anointing. He did two times. What Elijah did. He's my father. He's my father. What he carries, if they give it to you, what are you going to do? Take it. Oh. Can you lift up your hand, worship Jehovah? I'm about to close. Apostle David Entry always warns me when I come here, I shouldn't receive an offering. But he can't stop me. Because I know that this hotel does not belong to his father. His father's hotel is in Menshia. That is where our great Asantehine is. Somebody bring me some envelopes. I want somebody between now and Sunday to sow a seed of a thousand pounds into this ministry. Come to me and do it. That is the way you support a father. That is the way you support your father. Come to me here and do it. Between now and next Sunday, take a seed of a thousand and sow it into this ministry. Take a seed of a thousand pounds. Give me at least 20 people who will do that. Give me at least 20 people who are not just shouting but they are doing that. Come to me here quickly. Lift up your right hand. You are one of them. And it is called the seed of replacement. I pray that as you sow the seed, God will prepare you to take over from somebody. You know what? Even Ben Adad and Hazel, Hazel who was a crooked man, he knew how to carry a seed. And he's the one who carried that offering and took it to Elijah. He's the one who ended up taking over from Ben Adad. Somebody is saying, I want to be a replacement. I want to take over a certain position. Come to me here quickly, right now.
right now. I'm left with about 10 people. Nine people more. Lift up your hand. You can do it. You can do it. Take that seed. Sow it. Believe God. Father, I'm carrying a present in my hand. This present cannot buy a position. This present, this anointing cannot buy a position. This money cannot buy a position. This present cannot buy a position. But it is a sign of my love for you. And my respect for the anointing. Can I tell you this? I'm waiting for five more people to join us here. Five more people. Join us here. Five more people. That is one. Left to four. And I'm telling you the truth. This man tells me, Papa, I don't want you to receive an offering in our church. Because I don't want it to look like I brought my fathers to come and receive an offering for me. And I tell him, Apostle, my own is different. I don't receive the offering because of you. I receive it because of the people. Because I know what will happen when somebody sows a seed. People talk against seed, talk against, they talk again. And I'm like, we have seen the reward, the result of seed. I live in Boga. How do you think I became this kind of man? Take it. It's because I understand giving. When I put the envelope in your hand, hold it. Take it. Jesus. Ah. Listen, the Lord is still ministry. There are still over 10 people who should stand here and sow the seed and change something. Don't you see in the Bible? Jacob took a seed, went into the presence of his father and switched something over. By the time Esau came, the thing was gone. Can I get 10 people coming to me? 10 more people coming to me. Thank you, Lord. When you receive the envelope, you can go back to your seat. I pray in the name of Jesus. Sometimes they do administration and they say, anybody you see under the power, bring them to me. Oh, come here, lady. Let me put my hand on your head. They say, anybody you see under the power, bring them forward. There is another time they will not say, anybody you see under the power. They will say, anybody who wants to sow the seed should come forward. And that's why you say, no, 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 no. Come here. Because after you, nine people must follow you here. This is one. Eight more people. Lift up your hand and pray to God. If you follow this kind of ministry, where the man of God can talk about building things that are magnificent for God, and you can't find thousand pounds, you don't believe in ministry. Find it. You may be a young person, find it. You may be on retirement, find it. Seven more people, six more people. Can you lift up your hand and talk to God at all? This one is as powerful as when the people were falling and were carrying them. No, it's as powerful as that. Five more people. Can we do it in five seconds? Father, touch their lives. I pray. Gentlemen, let this seed speak. He said their seed will speak with the enemy in the gate. And we always think it is their children. Mm. Children who are broke and people who have children who are financially irresponsible cannot speak to the enemy in the gate. No, 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 no. Take it. Uh. Uh. God does not appropriate, God does not operate by approximate numbers. He operates. Take it with accuracy. Take it. All those envelopes are to leave my hands. Jesus. Uh, did anybody show that seed in the choir? Two of you. There are still two of you who should sow that seed. Two of you who should sow that seed. They should come to me if they don't mind. They should come to me if they don't mind. Two of you. 
Go and find that seed and sow it. Two of you, come to me if you don't mind. Because the time of your change has come. Somebody lift up your hand and talk to God. But I'm standing at the choir. I'm talking to choir. Two of you have to show that seed. Father, she has listened. She has heard. Now let the grace abound. Ah. One more. Father! Ah. Jesus! Menosiah, bring all those envelopes here. Man of God, pick this. Don't worry. Tell Apostle David, I will close the service. He should stop troubling himself. He hasn't got a microphone. Where is the pastor who was sitting here? Pastor Charles. Eh? He's going to preach somewhere. Are you a pastor or a carpenter? Somebody take this envelope from him. On your own volition, sow a seed of not less than 100. Come and pick an envelope and do it. And remember, this seed you are sowing is not your offering. There is a way you do your own offering. This seed is coming to this ministry to support this ministry, but it is not your offering for today. If it's your offering for today, keep it and bring it later. And you are picking this envelope and you are sowing this seed between now and next Sunday. Somebody hurry up. Can some more pastors take the envelopes and give it to the people so that I'll kill some time. Give me some envelopes here. And a pastor, give me some, some of the envelopes. Okay, you are a pastor, go ahead. Somebody come and do it. And when you lift up the envelope, start praying. Financially, I'm taking over. Because oh, the church and the kingdom of God must enter some spaces financially. Somebody pray. Somebody keep praying. Lift up the envelope and keep praying. Some of you are watching us online. The giving details are on the screen. Go ahead and show the seed. And those of you that have, paid, that have picked up the envelopes, if you are doing it, you are putting it in the envelope, that is fine. You are writing a check. You will see some details on the screen. Go ahead and do it. My Lord, I give you praise and glory. Somebody lift up that envelope and start praying to God. I want some people to do that seed right now. Come and put it on the altar. Come and put it in a basket here. In front here right now. Somebody do it. In the name of Jesus, come and do it. I'm still waiting for the details on the screen. I understand it's a new screen. We are working on it. And one of the things your screen should respect is the offering. So tell the screen after praise and worship and the preaching, remember the offering. Before announcement. Oh glory. Thank you sir. Anybody who is doing your seed right now. Put it on the altar. Wow. This is the new way. QR code. Take a picture of this Akira Budu. And you get all the details. I'm sure when we're sharing envelopes, some of you were saying, this is an old way of doing it. Write what you gave through the Sakrabudu on the envelope and put the envelope on the screen, on the stage. So if you do it on the online or whatever, still write it on the envelope and come and put the envelope on the stage. I want you to get up and come. Somebody do it right now. Come on down. Quickly, 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 quickly. Do it. And when we close, I want you to go to the book stand. As usual, I brought a lot of books. I brought a lot of books. Very interesting titles. Go. Go and get some of my books. Read them. They will bless your life. The title of my book this year is called Saviors. When you go there, ask for a certain book called Saviors. And get it and read it. This is Saviors. Okay. There were two saviors and saviors warrant. But the saviors warrant is finished. And then you go there, you see this pack of books on explosion. 
This one is the fear factor. Laying on of hands. The pressure of the people. The sons of oil. The rapture spirit. Go and pick it. Go and get a book. I think I'm done. Okay, bring it. Thank you. I'm still waiting. Somebody's doing your offering right now. And remember, I told you, this is not the offering you normally give on Sunday. The one you go to the gas station to get change. If you have 20, you want to give five. You go to the gas station. Then you buy chewing gum. And they give you change so that you can, you can have access to the five. That's not what I'm talking about. Oh, come on, lift up your hand and talk to God. I pray, Father, as your people respond, let your blessing come upon us, show us your goodness and your mercy in the name of Jesus. Remember this church in your moment of blessing. We went and did pneumaticals in Trinity Baptist Church. They have such a beautiful, beautiful auditorium. But I remember that years ago, they used to struggle. And God brought them to an expected end. One day, Caris will be at the expected end. And one thing I know about Caris is that God will not give you anything less than what you have here now. God will not give you anything less. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. Madam, the Lord bless you. You are different from the rest of us. She's a special woman. They are the ones that do exploits for the kingdom of God. Glory. Lift up your hand and keep talking to God. That you are going to take over something. Praise the Lord. Lift up your hand, talk to him. Father, I'm going to take over somewhere. The Lord bless you and increase you. Enlarge your coast, expand you. May you carry the oil for replacement. You will replace somebody at a high place. And God's name will be glorified in your life. Somebody shout an amen. amen. And now, <laughs> praise the Lord. And now, the meeting is not over. We are going to receive our tithes and our offerings. Is that what to do? Oh, we've done it already. So we are going to receive our tithes and our offerings. Everybody go ahead. Find your wallet, find your whatever for your tithes and your offerings. What you just did is a seed you sowed because you believe God. This seed is also coming to the ministry. But you are doing something extra today because it's an extraordinary day. I like that tune a lot. It's one of my best tunes. And a song goes with it and I like the song. Man of God, how do we do the offering? Q, let's, let's, come again. So it's online. So here they don't have that local way of, shall we dance and bring our offering? Guruga, 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 guruga. Oh, mwa bing, kura, dodo, mwa bing, mwa bing, mwa bing, mwa bing. You know, I used to stand in our church in Boga and prophesy that the time is coming we will not see an offering bowl in a church. I prophesied it over 15 years, 20 years ago. And I'm surprised to see it. I went to Lagos, offering time no bowl. My wife and my assistant and myself were the only ones holding an offering like lepers. I looked at myself, I'm like, leprosy has got my hand. Where am I going to take this offering? There was no bowl. Finally, I found a stray bowl on the side. I went and put it in. My wife to put it in. My assistant went and put it in. I asked the pastor, 
later. I said, ah, the offering. He said, oh, Pastor, we don't use the offering book. So I know you are not using offering book, but use the thing you are using. Instead of only your eyes. So everybody come and do your offering right now. You've covered the thing. You've covered it. You will appear in the camera. You'll be part of the QR code. What about me? Me too, let me sit down. But you know what, people? After the meeting, go and get a copy of the books. Read them. And the Lord bless you. I think that Dr. David Enchi will perfect this stage of the offering. Put your hands together for the Lord. Oh, I thought I heard you shouting like someone who is taking over. Please be seated. Wow, just in case you haven't been able to do your offerings, I think the ushers should have been in the aisle with the printed out QR code, just in case you can't see the one on the screen. So, ushers should be, if you need to scan the QR code, you can indicate by raising your hands. And Apple Pay, Google Pay, PayPal, uh, bank transfer, text giving, different ways you can give. If you need the ushers to bring the QR code for you to scan, indicate by raising your hand so they can. Please help me. Let's appreciate Papa. Wow. Oh, come on, rise to your feet. Let's rise to our feet and appreciate. Come on, come on. Let's appreciate the vessel, the servant of God. Thank you so much, Papa. Every time you come, you move in a, dire a prophetic direction that takes us to another phase. Church, I hope you know we have moved to another, another phase. We have moved. Let's appreciate God's servant again. Amen. Please be seated. I'll just try and please let's take the Amen. Reverend didn't, Reverend Stu didn't get to say much about the books, but then um, I believe nowadays it doesn't bring too many books. But when we close, you have to make sure you grab your copy. It's um, at the, just in front of the left. Grab, grab your copy and so you can understand by books. And then when you read a book, it's a spirit. That when you read the words, it's the spirit on the author that you are catching. So sometimes it's not enough to just hear preaching. It's good to write, to read. He said, these things, write them in a book. And then Revelation said, blessed is he that read these things and do them. So when we close, make sure you grab some. I know today you plan to take somebody out to celebrate their birthday. Defer it, postpone it. Postpone it. They may not be happy, but later on, you will give them so much, they will thank you for taking a spiritual step. Amen. So make sure when we close, the, the cover is even nice. Even those of you who don't like reading, just for the cover, you can, <laughs> you can buy. This is very nice. Saviors. And there are, I think there are quite a few books here. Um, we have The Fear Factor. 
And then, oh, laying on of hands. Everyone in KP2 must, okay, this is not KP2. But right. <laughs> every young person must get, get this. Because there's no way you can do exploits in life and ministry if hands have not been laid on you. Pressure of the people. Papa, I was there when you launched this book many years ago. <laughs> this is over 20 years. Over 30 years. Yeah, I remember. I was there. I was sitting in the congregation when they launched it and I got my copy. Look at where it has brought me today. <laughs> Make sure you get it. And then, wow. The sons and oil. Sons and oil. This is important. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sons of oil. <laughs> if you the book as well, from my eyes. Forgive me. Sons of oil. Sons of oil. I believe God is raising somebody as a son of oil. Rap shake spirit. Please, I think there are quite a few, not too many. So go when we, as soon as we close, go and grab your copy before you leave the building. It will be a blessing. Amen. Did you receive something today? Please help me. Let's celebrate. Papa again. But before we close, just a moment, just in case you are here, you want to say, Pastor, please pray for me. I want a fresh start in Jesus. I want to know Jesus. I want to be born again. I want to be in Christ. I want a new relationship with Jesus. Shall we all bow our heads? I want a new relationship with Jesus. I want a new day. Pastor, pray for me. I, you are the one I want to pray for. You can't take over outside of Jesus. The only way you can take over is when you are a son of God, when Christ is in you, because I can do all things through Christ. You are here, you want to say, Pastor, please pray for me. I want a new relationship with Jesus. My relationship with Jesus is not the way it should be. I want a fresh start. If that's your desire, I want to pray for you. So raise your hand above your head if that is your desire. You want me to pray with you. Lift up your right hand above your head so I can see it and pray with you. You are here. You say, Pastor, please pray for me. I want a new relationship with Jesus. I want to take over by the power of the Holy Spirit. I want Jesus in my life. Lift up your hand, those in the building and in the overflow. You can raise your hand right now if you want me to pray with you. I would like to pray with you. Lift raise it above your head so i can see it above your head so i can see it right now god bless you as you do that lift it above your head quickly as we have to close now now just in case you are watching online and you also want to say pastor please pray for me i need a new start in christ i need a new relationship with jesus please say these words after me say lord jesus i know i am a sinner and i've sinned against god but i believe that you are the son of god you died on the cross to save me from my sins from today i repent from my sins and i ask you to forgive me please wash me with your blood and make me a brand new person i commit my life to you and i make a determination that i'll live for you i'll be in church i'll serve you all the remaining days of my life by the help of the holy spirit so help me god in jesus name amen Father, I thank you for everyone who said this genuinely from their heart. I pray that you move from grace to grace, strength to strength, favor to favor, and glory to glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Just in case you are watching and you made that decision, there's an information on the screen. Follow the announcer, and we would like to connect with you as you grow in the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Your amen is, is it looks like it's tired. Listen, you remember, I've never heard this before. When you are tired and when you are sick, you are, you are likely, you are anointed or you are likely to be replaced. So don't be tired. Shout amen! Aha! Uh -huh.